Hi, good afternoon. Daniel Thomas here again with the Love March Movement. You know, I'm fasting every single week, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's every single Wednesday. We're really inviting you to join us. Um, we are going hard before the Lord, really praying that, you know, God will protect our nation concerning sexual purity and the family especially. Please, prayer and fasting is important. More things are wrought by prayer and fasting than the world knows. It's important as Christians standing up for um, sexual purity and the family in our nation, protecting the family structure, protecting our nation from evil forces, that we stand up for righteousness and that we pray seriously before the Lord because the battle is not just on an advocacy educational level, but the battle is also spiritual. Right, so let's just jump into it. You know, we do it in the format three points, three people every single week. Just to jump into the three points, the first thing I want to say is pray for persons um, struggling with addictions to pornography. Pornography is something that's really, really serious. Um, it can really mess you up, right? You know, the devil's plan is for us to just be completely messed up and to propagate messed up society through our lines, through our sexual interactions, right? Pornography is one of those things that completely warps you um, in terms of how you think about the opposite sex. As a man, if you watch pornography, you are actually training your mind to, you know, to, to view women as objects of pleasure, right? To, to treat women as if they are, you know, things in supermarkets that you just go and pick, you know. Oh, I like the top, I like, I like the top part bigger. I like the bottom part bigger. No, I don't really like, you know. I like, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's kind of dash with things when you don't like them, you know. Um, when we develop that shopping for women kind of mentality, um, you know, it, it really does pay a toll on the family structure and also for the stability of society. Women are a treasure from God. And we need to treat them that way. Pornography lets us treat them like soap or a bottle in a, in a supermarket that you can just dash when you do, you know, when you're tired of that particular size. Like, seriously? Um, we, you know, we shouldn't really, we shouldn't be viewing women like that at all. And same thing for women viewing men. When, you know, pornography, it warps the image, your image of a man. And, it puts the ultimate um, emphasis, the biggest emphasis on sex. But sex, is, sex is, is good stuff, right? I'm a virgin, but, you know, I can tell sex is good stuff, but it is not the pinnacle of our experience as humans. That is an important point that we need to hear and we need to propagate that point because, you know, one thing pornography is doing as well is that it's, it creates in our minds the illusion of this perfect sexual experience with all these different noises and sounds and positions and, you know, all kind of different stuff, which is fake. It's a lie of the enemy, right, to, to allow us to not enjoy our partner. It, it's serious stuff. Um, you know, there's even one guy that... He just watched so much pornography by the time he was married. He didn't have an, he, on the honeymoon night, he didn't even have an erection when his wife, um, you know, took off her clothes and they were ready to have sex because he wasn't attracted to her. He was attracted to this virtual girl that was, you know, created, um, you know, pornography. Pornography is serious stuff. Now, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about that. I have had my own personal struggles with pornography. Um, I was addicted to pornography for a number of years. It was really, really bad. I would watch porn any chance I got, you know. Sometimes I was by myself. Um, sometimes not even by myself. Like, it was really, really bad. You know, with pornography comes masturbation. And you know, that's a whole different topic by itself, right? But, you know, it really, it really caused... Um, some serious stuff, but I decided I was going to fight this thing. And you know how I processed it? I said to myself, every time I watch pornography, I am contributing to the destruction of my marriage. Right? Pornography is one of those things that makes studies have shown that many who watch pornography are more angry, right? And um, you know, it contributes to several issues, the insecurity of a woman, and several, several other things. Right? But thank God it's like June gone is three years, I think. 
since I've watched pornography, right? You know, really fighting for that. It's not easy, but fighting for that, um, for that girl because don't want to go back there at all because the thing is so destructive, right? If you are struggling with pornography, I want to let you know it is possible to completely remove yourself from that situation. I'll give you three quick points, right? Create a wall of scripture around your mind, right? And any, any thought that comes, your responsibility is to test that thought, right? Two scriptures are, are, are fed my mind on Philippians 4 verse 8, whatever is true, whatever is known, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, our prayers where they think about such things. And 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 to 6, for the weapons that we fight with and the weapons of this world on the contrary, they have defined pot to demolish strongholds, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets us up against knowledge of God and we take care of every thought and make it obedient to Christ. But you can imagine at any time there was that thought in my mind and it faced that test. It completely failed. And more, most times I forgot what exactly I was thinking about because the verses are just so long, right? So, you know, create that mental barrier, right? I would encourage you also to protect what you, what you see. Um, guard your eyes, guard your ears. Um, what you listen to, what you feed your mind because what you feed your mind on and what you think about is who you will become as a man thinks. So is he, right? You have to be careful about that. So when you walk in and have a train, there are all these poses of, both of naked girls. If you, you know, on the road somewhere, all these naked girls, you need to guard your eyes, you know. Uh, just, you know, focus on, on protecting yourself because the devil wants to kill you. Yeah. Know that straight. And fight. Stand as a warrior and fight. You see me? You have to fight. You can't just lay down and say, sure, this thing is so hard. I'm not going to make it. You have to stand up and fight. You know, I encourage you to fight this thing. I know, no matter what the struggle is that is holding, pornography, fornication, whatever it is, you can make it out. The Love March Movement, we are dedicated to standing with you. You link us up, send us an email, right? Um, Love March 2012 Jam at gmail.com or Love March Movement at gmail.com, right? And we'll stand with you, right? Because many of us have been there and we have won the battle. Some of us are still struggling, right? But we are here to offer our support and our help. Be accountable as well. Right? Be accountable, stand, you know, people of like mind with the same intentions. You know, be accountable to them. Let them know, you know, how things are going. Let them check up on you, you know. Um, you know, male to male, female to female, in terms of that accountability process. And guard that. And thirdly, focus on loving God, as opposed to fighting and running away from sin. Focus on loving God and pursue God. The closer you get to God, the more you read the Bible, the further you will go away from sin. And if I could just tuck on Brata, you know, fourth point, as soon as you drop, you get back up your soldier. You don't wall around in the dirt. You don't wait two days to go up to the Lord. He will forgive you the instant that you run back to him with sincerity of heart. Know that for sure, right? He loves you and he has empowered us to live holy lives. So let's stand in that. The second point we want to pray about, we want to pray that, um, I don't know if you've been watching the news, but you know, the, about 16 homosexuals were evicted. We want to pray that there would be uh, that they would get a place that they would live, that they would be able to live, and a place that they would be able to get help, right? Um, to be delivered from, from homosexuality. We really want them to be free and to, you know, be, you know, to come back as, as um, citizens that contribute to the building of our, of, of our society. Uh, so let's be praying about that and let's be seeing what we can do, all right? Um, we're dedicated to impacting change. Um, but let's be praying about that, right? Um, that's, that's the least that we can do about this. We're concerned about them. The least we can do is pray, right? And, you know, feel free to drop you, you know, send us a message with your comments about whatever it is, you know, suggestions. And with your suggestion, it would be awesome if you suggested yourself to help, right? Because there are only so many of us um, fighting to, to preserve this nation, only so many of us fighting to redeem this nation from the madness that's going on. Right? We need more persons to stand with us. Thirdly, let's pray for um, single, and, single Christians and dating Christians that they would commit themselves to serving the Lord and finding a spouse as they serve the Lord, as they fulfill the purpose. God will provide that woman for you, that man for you. Right? You know, depending on the gender, man to woman, you know, a relationship, woman to man. Right? Um, God will provide for you. And what you have to keep your eyes fixed on him and don't compromise, people of God. Stand firm in the faith and recognize that you are building a legacy that will be passed on generations to come. 
you know, in, in, you know, right now, what you do, if you make a video right now, a hundred years time, your children can be watching that video. Your, your, the whole line of your children can be watching that video. The things that you write, pass on a legacy of purity to your family. God wants to use you to, to create stable society, use you personally. So Christians, preserve, create the right boundaries for your relationships. Don't fool around. Women are treasures of God. Women, you are treasures of God. Don't just dash your body around the place. You are made in the image of God. Men, don't treat them any other way. You are made in the image of God. And you are, you are called to guard them as treasures of God. Stand firm in the faith. And don't compromise. And don't tell me that stupid excuses about how, you know, it's just so human stay. You are not just an animal. You can't control your desires. You can't stand up for what is right. Fight, man. Fight for your family. Fight for the generations to come. Fight for the, 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 the purity of your relationship. And fight for the purity of yourself if you're not in a relationship yet. And, and in a control, self-control. Ask the Holy Spirit to be giving you that. Again, we're dedicated to standing with you. These things are important because we realize that when we stand, we're not just standing for ourselves, but we're standing for our country. Right? I don't know if you saw that I pledge video. It's beautiful. You know, I pledge myself to sexual purity for the sake of my country. This is individual responsibility that filters down into the entire society. So let's be dedicated to this. Let's stand as a people whose eyes are fixed on God, saying, Eternal Father, bless our land. Guard us and guide us and strengthen us. Give us vision and wisdom. Have that as a prayer. And let's stand for the purity of our nation. Because a sexually pure nation will be the most productive nation. You can't even argue with that. You cannot even argue with that. All right. So the three people that we're praying for this week we want to pray for Maurice Tomlinson. If you don't know Maurice Tomlinson. Um, you know he's going hard to remove the burglars of different Caribbean countries. You know, he's instrumental in the fight in Jamaica. Um, he's the one that is pretty much giving all the funds for Javit to sue the government. You know he leads AIDS free world. Um, yeah, let us be praying for him. You know, we want J uh, Maurice Tomlinson to really come to know Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Like, we really want him to be saved. This is serious. We're concerned about his soul. We're asking God to really save him. Secondly, we want to pray for Angeline Jackson. Right? Let's pray for her. She would come to know Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior and that she would experience that, that, that awesome reality of God pursuing her and loving her and dying for her sins. Man, love of God is so amazing. No matter what you've ever done, God still loves you and he wants to purify you. He wants to clean you with his own hand, without gloves, without scorn, to purify and return him, return you to him in that perfect state, that legal justification, and he's committed to standing with you for the process of sanctification that takes place. Thirdly, I want to pray for Clive Forrester, who is um, a leader of Jamaicans for Secular Humanism. Uh, let's be praying for Clive as well, right? And his mind will be renewed by the love of Jesus Christ, and he would see the awesome historical evidence for Jesus Christ and the just the, 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 the awesome way that God went, the, the things that God went through to show us his love and preserve his word so that we could have it now. Pray for, pray for these guys, please. Lord, we just give you glory. We ask you for increase, God. And we look, mighty God, to you. For you said, those that know you, we will do exploits. And we will turn this world upside down for the kingdom of God. And that will be for the greater good. We love you, Lord. We commit to you, in Jesus' name.